Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a Flirt Nandina. This is Flirt Nandina, a dwarf Nandina that stays evergreen and has beautiful new red growth throughout the growing season. Flirt is a dwarf Nandina that'll only reach about two feet in height, maybe two and a half feet in width. It's just a fantastic, low-growing evergreen shrub. Like most Nandinas, Flirt will grow in zone 6 to 10, probably even 6 to 11. In zone 6A, I probably wouldn't use this plant in open space, like not out in the middle of a parking lot or something like that, because almost certainly it would be burned in the winter time, but it would make an absolutely great foundation plant in zone 6 through 11. One of the nice features of these dwarf Nandinas, there's one called Firepower that turns red in the winter time, and then there's one called Harbor Dwarf that's most similar to this variety and then this one flirt all stay extremely low and are extremely slow growing so there's almost zero maintenance that has to be done to these you definitely need at least a half a day's full sun and really i think this plant would prefer two-thirds or more of the day in the sun and i think that's where you're going to get the best coloration on it that's where you're going to get the fullest growth you know you can barely see through the top of this plant and it's only it's less than a foot tall and it has this nice thick growth because it's been grown in the sun as I mentioned, Flirt would make a fantastic foundation plant. Any space where you have very low windows or a low porch rail, there's not a lot of choices for those particular items that stay two feet or lower and keep their leaves in the wintertime. This would also make a great container plant if you were in probably zones 8 to 10 or 8 to 11. I don't think I'd use it as a container plant in zone 6 or 7. I think it'd end up damaged in the wintertime if the roots froze solid. Also, this plant would look great mass planted. The spring and summer growth on this plant is so beautiful and so vivid red that anything you put with it, like something like gold foliage plant, like if you put gold mop cypress behind this plant, it would be absolutely stunning. The main feature on this Flirt Nandina, I put the sign back in it. This is a patented plant and it comes with the sign in the container. You can see this picture with the red new foliage on it. That's really the main feature of this plant is that all the new growth on it in the spring and summer has this amazing red coloration and then uh, it fades and stays evergreen in the winter time. It's almost like having two different plants. It really, really is a nice plant. And uh, this one or Harbor Dwarf, Harbor Dwarf has a little more purple rather than red coloration on its new growth, but both of them are really, really nice plants and super low maintenance. In terms of planting Nandinas, they're really kind of rugged plants. We don't have to worry about them too much. I linked a video in the description of this video that is for planting them in either clay soils or a separate video for planting them in sandy soils. One consideration we definitely have to be concerned about on Nandinas is they're kind of fragile near the base, especially when they're small like this. So make sure that when you pull it out of the container, you're not pulling on the top of the plant or bending it too much. You can break these off easily. Flip the pot upside down in your hand and lift the pot over your head and that will prevent you from breaking it. Nandinas are very, very drought tolerant. Once these are established, if you're in an area that gets regular rainfall, I doubt very seriously you'd ever need to water this plant. This is definitely not a plant for an automated irrigation system. Definitely fertilize your Nandinas in the spring. I would use something for acid loving plants like Azalea Camellia Rhododendron fertilizer at its slow release, something that'll last three or four months. This is such a slow growing plant, I don't think you're really ever gonna have to prune it. If it ever did exceed the size that you wanna keep it, which is pretty small, you can actually take these, these uh, grow like bamboo and they're layered. All Nandinas are like this, but you can take about three or four inches out just by making a single cut on this stem, I can take three or four inches of height out of this plant. It's really super easy to do. Nandinas get almost no insect or disease problems. Virtually nothing chews on these. We'll occasionally see some scale insects on the older growth near the ground. Usually that's on stressed plant. Usually if they're planted well, elevated when they're planted, lightly mulched, not overwatered, and fertilized, you're just not gonna see many problems on these deer rarely ever mess with Nandina. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the low maintenance, beautiful red foliaged flirt Nandina. Thank you for watching my video. And if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about Nandinas. Thanks for watching. <laughs>